Morning YouTube. I want to talk about something that has to do with electricity. Let's talk about that. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. I suggest you get one of these for your camper, uh, for your RV. Uh, we've had this since our 1992 Terry camper. Actually, I think we even had it in our pop-up camper. Tells you the correct polarity, reverse polarity, open neutral, open ground. It tells you your voltage. It tells you your voltage at any of the plugs that you plug it in at. And they're going to read differently depending on how much electrical stuff's on each one of those plugs. You know, because the way the RV wiring works is, you know, a wire runs through the RV. It'll go to an outlet, and then it goes through the outlet, and then it continues on to the next thing. So, uh, for example, I could have this plugged in to an outlet that's over here, and then when we turn on our microwave, the voltage will change. Or I could plug it into an outlet that's a little bit closer to the wall over there, uh, inside of our fifth wheel here, and when we turn on our air conditioner, the voltage will change. Uh, the other thing I suggest is that you have some sort of a surge protector. Now. Um, above and beyond that, I think that you should have something that not protects just from surge protection, uh, for surge protection, but also something that will protect you from uh, low voltage. And that's what I really want to talk about. Now, we have a Hughes uh, Power Watchdog, which we love. And the reason is because I have an app on the phone, it'll tell me my uh, voltage uh, that I have being used on the two legs of the, uh, the plug that's coming in here, the 50 amp service. It also tells me the uh, amperage of the things that I have running in here. Um, the other thing that it does is protect from low voltage. Now, low amperage is one thing. Low voltage is something entirely different to where a lot of things get burned up because of low voltage. And low voltage is sneaky. You don't know necessarily you have low voltage uh, unless you're very in tune with your air conditioners and your microwave and your refrigerator if you have a compressor style refrigerator, which we don't. But low voltage, you can start your microwave up and you know how it does that bar sound. <laughs> um, if that sound sounds funny, uh, it could be that you have low voltage. Same with your air conditioner. Whenever you turn on your air conditioner, if you're running low voltage, uh, the low voltage in an air conditioner will not engage that compressor as hard and as solid you know as solidly as it should um, when the rotor is locked in you know you have a a rotor that does the compressing uh, and it has to be locked it's kind of just picture it like a clutch and um, it's like running with your clutch you're riding your clutch you guys ever burned up uh, a clutch disc because you were riding your clutch on your car uh, I know that's a little bit old school and not a lot of people have stick shifts anymore, but that's what it's like whenever you're doing low voltage. You're not necessarily engaging it all the way and it will burn it up. Um, or it won't allow it, even if it does lock up, it won't allow the motor to run at the RPM it needs to do, you know, to be, to compress and stay cool. Um, and I'm talking about the motor itself, not the unit. So we've run into that in the past. And uh, we hear a lot of people that say, oh, I've been, you know, so many thousand miles and so many different parts over so many years, and I've never had an issue. Well, good. You know, you're lucky. You are lucky. Because in the short amount of time that we traveled, let's say last year, uh, we did 33 states. We did over 20,000 miles. We stayed at a lot of different campgrounds. We had two instances of bad voltage. Um, we had one that the uh, pedestal was so bad, we actually had to have a repair guy come out and fix it. And um, not only that, but uh, the very last RV park we were at, um, we had a bad breaker. And we didn't have any problems whatsoever with our travel trailer for the four months that we were there, or the three months we were there, until we got rid of our travel trailer and we brought in a new fifth wheel and within two days we popped you know tripped the breaker we found a weak link and that has to do with you know how much voltage uh, your your unit draws how much it needs and how much it uses uh, depend on what size it is and in this case uh, this fifth wheel uses a little bit more than a travel trailer so we have uh, also experienced uh, in the past um, going back quite a few years, uh, back to 2017 to be exact, uh, where we pulled into a campground, um, and it was in the summer, and we were in Florida, and we fired up our air conditioner, and uh, this little meter used to sit right up by our air conditioner on an outlet that was directly next to the air conditioner, 
and I could see what the voltage was going into the air conditioner and it would drop down to 104. Well that's definitely unacceptable. Heard about the voltage uh, for the AC because it runs around 102 so I'm not going to run the air conditioner any more than I have to. Um, that might be a deal breaker for us to, to stay a couple nights. Uh, I'm not we sure. I went ahead and checked uh, with the campground manager, I guess you could say, the park manager. And he said that the RV that's next to us, the fifth wheel, uh, they're not going to be back till the fall. So he said that we could just hook up uh, our power over there and voila. Come to find out that that was definitely a bad loop in that campground. And they had told us to actually plug in to the neighbor because that one is actually on a different loop in the park and it was the, the voltage was great but that gets me to the safety issue that might be out there that a lot of you won't recognize if you're not in tune and know what your air compressor sounds like or your air conditioning compressor sounds like when it is fully locked in and, and, and turns on correctly or if you don't know what your microwave necessarily is supposed to sound like um, you're not going to know that you have low voltage necessarily and low voltage will burn those things up so that gets me into this controversial talk that I've touched on in the past and that is uh, having an auto former an auto former is not a transformer it's not a step up transformer a lot of the principles are the same and if you want to put a blanket statement on those kind of devices, then you can put it in the category of being some sort of step-up transformer. But in reality, they have a little bit different way that they do it. And that's why they call it an autoformer, not a transformer. Um, the controversy comes into play that these campgrounds um, fall under some sort of guidelines uh, to where whenever somebody is building a campground they have a guideline that they kind of follow now that industry is dictating that they believe that any kind of a transformer should be banned from the campground because they can be unsafe it's it's not true you can only draw from this pedestal what is available at the pedestal you know a 50 amp plug has a certain look to it you know it has basically four prongs on it those four prongs can only draw so much they can't they can't draw any more than what's available the campgrounds hoping that you're going to be operating at less than 50 amps well most of the time we are matter of fact 99 percent of the time all these RVs are operating less than 50 amps even with both rooftop airs running and a TV on and maybe uh, an ice maker and your refrigerator, you're not running at a true 50 amps. You might be running in the 43 amp range, something like that. But you're not running at a true 50 amps. So what happens is whenever you have an autoformer, that autoformer converts amperage into voltage. It's just a science thing. It's just simple math. Um, amps can be converted into volts. And what happens is whenever the autoformer is reading low voltage which can burn up motors it looks to see if there's extra amps available and again you heard what I said we very rarely operate at anything above 40 amps it has 10 amps that it cannot you know work on it has 10 amps that it can go get let's say that so what it will do is it will go ahead and in, you know boost its input where it can accept a little bit more it'll accept let's say another five amps from that 50 amp pedestal so now instead of running at 40 amps we're now running at 45 amps and that auto former is converting those five amps into voltage to make sure nothing burns up inside here's where the problem is the campground again is banking on the fact that everybody's going to stay at that 40 amp level and I just told you now we're running at 45 amps or we can even step that up at a 5 amp increment let's say we're running at 45 amps because we have everything on inside this RV everything the microwave the hot water tank element we have uh, the you know fan we have lights we have the converter the batteries need charge we have the ice maker everything's running let's say we're at 45 amps at that point in time and then the autoformer senses low voltage coming in from the park trying to feed the RV 
it will then make and go from 45 amps to 50 amps and it's drawn a true 50 amps from that outlet or that pedestal well again the campgrounds hoping that you're not doing that it hopes that you're not operating on 50 amps that's where there's a problem because now you're asking for it to deliver exactly what it's designed for and a lot of these parks the infrastructure is just not up to par um, especially the older ones you got to figure back in the you know parks that are made in the 60s or even the 70s uh, a 50 amp rig wasn't common I mean there our house didn't even have but like uh, I think 60 amp service at our house um, all the way up until the 80s or the early 90s um, that was uh, whenever they installed a central air unit and they had to go to 100 amp service so for an RV park that was just for camping and weekend trips for them to have 50 amp service at all the sites I mean that's that's unheard of and the reason that this industry standard is going into place that they're trying to ban auto farmers is because everybody is trying to get what they need to keep their rigs safe why would you need to do that well I guarantee if I have a problem with my rooftop air conditioner and I can show that I have low voltage coming in and it's burned up my rooftop air conditioner I'm going to have to jump through all kinds of hoops legally, you know, have to seek legal representation to get the park to pay for my rooftop air conditioner. I, I mean, it's, it would be a nightmare. So I'm going to protect with this auto former uh, device, I'm going to protect with that insurance policy my components inside the RV. So a lot of people say, well, you, you, I don't, we hardly ever need them. Yeah, we've traveled all over. Listen, they may not even know. They may not even know that they've got issues. They, you know, I'm going to tell you personally, uh, over 33 states and 22,000 miles last year traveled, um, we experienced two parks with issues. And then three parks moving into this year. So there's been three times over the in less than a year's time that we've had issue with electricity so it happens it definitely happens now if you've got somebody that's you know they're lucky rabbit's foot and they've got everything you know going their way and it's all rainbows and sunshine they've never had an issue good for them I have a feeling they probably had an issue and didn't even realize it because that's exactly how it works low voltage unless you're really in tune or you're always checking there's a lot of times you don't know necessarily what you're getting and the, the campgrounds they're doing what they can but they don't really have an incentive to tear up all of their electrical and replace it with all new just because everybody needs exactly 100 percent 50 amp service so that's why the ban is in place like I mentioned it's because that auto former will and can and will potentially um, go ahead and try to get 50 amps out of that pedestal and that's whenever you know the weakest link starts showing up um, I wouldn't go anywhere without it now here's the other thing we have it mounted inside the RV there's two reasons for that well actually three reasons and number one by far of those three reasons is that um, it's needs to be protected from the elements the auto former you can put it out there and plug it into the pole you're supposed to cover it up lift it it's not supposed to get wet it's not you know it's not made for that the fact that it's got some water shedding capability and they do make a separate cover for it uh, that you can purchase um, and all this stuff will be in the links in the description of this video um, you, you can put it out there on the pole um, but here's the other thing um, theft they're expensive um, they're well worth it to me because just replacing one rooftop air conditioner is cost more than that so now you got to worry about it being stolen now they've got a nice steel handle and you can put a bike cable around it and stuff like that but you know it's just a, a pair of uh, good side cutters or uh, some kind of a bolt cutter or something you could cut through that cable and, and basically be off with something that even on eBay would sell for two hundred and fifty dollars like that and the third is um, because I don't get question about it if there is a park and really the park is the only one that can ban those things from being used um, if I have it sitting out by a pole um, they may have a policy where they have a guy that drive and I've never seen this never heard of it I'm just making this up as far as what I can imagine 
they could have a guy that's driving around on a golf cart every morning and looking and seeing if anybody has a box sitting near the pedestal. And if they do have that box, they knock on the door and say, hey, is that, an, is that a transformer? We want You don't, can't use transformers here. Never heard of that, never experienced that personally, but that's why we have it inside. That way it doesn't even give the ability for somebody to say, what is that? I don't think I want that on our pedestal. So take all that for what it's worth. I wanted to talk about it though because again reading through a, a form I've got somebody that says you don't need it and they're banned anyways and that's not the case. Um, now I don't get any kickback, any money or anything from Autoformer. I'm not associated or affiliated with them in any way. It's just a couple of components that we use that we really like. The Power Watchdog gives us the ability to protect from low voltage and high voltage. Um, the Autoformer actually allows us to set it apart that maybe it was tough to get into. Maybe we don't have another option. And once we got in there uh, and we've hooked up, we found that the voltage might occasionally go a little low. We know that the Autoformer is there to kick that up and keep everything protected in here. And uh, we don't have to move. We don't have to cut our stay short. And we don't have to worry about the unit. So take that for what it's worth. And as always, guys, we hope to see you out here. Bye.